Today on Good Morning Maine, we'll hear why mill workers in Baileyville have walked off the job. Plus, helpful advice for Maine voters as they prepare for the next month's election. And we'll take you to the grand opening for a new skate park in Bucksport. Good morning and welcome to Good Morning Maine. I'm Emma Smith. And I'm Craig Colson. Thank you for joining us. We'll have those stories coming up in just a few moments. But first, a check of the forecast. After a beautiful weekend, a beautiful fall weekend, it looks like some rain moving into the area today. Yep. Kind of makes you just want to stay in with a cup of tea and a book or a movie. Sounds perfect. It's still Monday though, so <laughs> let's check in with uh, Conrad Sapinski for that full forecast. Thank you so much. Our first weather this morning is brought to you by Scott's Recreation. Locations in Turner, Manchester, Herman, and Orono, Maine. All right, once again, another overcast day outside this morning. Even a couple of showers are starting to show up. Look at this. All over the state, we're looking at rain from north to central to right by the coast. There are a couple of showers that are in the area. This will just pick up in intensity throughout the day today. Visibility wise, though, not too bad here in town. Same story up in the Millinocket area. But look at Bar Harbor. Visibilities are a bit lower. A little bit of rain in the area, some thicker clouds, a little bit of fog, combination of everything, and definitely some lower visibilities all over the region. We do have a solid 5 to 10 mile per hour breeze here in town, right by the coast as well. Bar Harbor into the Rockland area, Machias, same story. Story. Even up north into Greenville, Millinocket, same thing at around 10 miles per hour. Now, later on today, we're going to have winds at around 10, 15 miles per hour. Temperatures back in those mid 50s. And then we're looking at cloudy skies and some rain that will be likely throughout the day today. Same story tonight. Showers all over the area, mainly scattered. Temperatures back in those mid 40s, so a little bit cooler with a light breeze out of the northeast at around 5 to 15 miles per hour for tomorrow. A little bit warmer. We're going to be back in those mid 50s, mostly cloudy skies, a couple of scattered showers possible once again. Later on this afternoon, we are looking at scattered rain. Temperatures back in those mid 50s. Thank you, Conrad. Workers from two different unions have gone on strike at Woodland Pulp in Baileyville. Members from the International Association of Machinists and Service Employees International Union, or SEIU, are protesting in the name of more reliable job standards and job security. More than 20 workers in IAM went on strike Saturday at midnight, with nearly 60 workers at the SEIU to follow after midnight last night. The union members say they are seeking what they call a fair contract and pushing back against a new job classification that would aim to replace several different positions. The IAM union has also filed grievances against Woodland Pulp with the National Labor Relations Board over what they claim was bad faith bargaining. Well, other news, an inmate serving a more than 30-year sentence for murder has died in prison. The Maine Department of Corrections says Greg Warmke passed away Saturday morning just after 5 a.m. at the Maine State Prison. His death was attended by medical personnel. State police, the Attorney General's office, and medical examiner were all notified about the death. Warmke began serving a sentence for the murder of his ex-wife in Fairfield back in 2004, and his earliest possible release date was April 2035. Warmke was 64 years old. The Dexter Police Department is asking residents to be out on the lookout for an alleged car thief. A dark Subaru with a main breast cancer license plate reading 415AYT was stolen from the Dexter subway yesterday afternoon. Police are looking for the male wearing a gray hoodie seen on screen. The vehicle was reportedly last seen driving towards Dover. Police are asking anyone with information to call the Dexter Police Department. That number is 9247622 and ask for Officer Rodney Moores. Well, two horses had to be euthanized by police after they were struck by a vehicle. Gorham police say the animals escaped from a pasture on Friday night on Route 202. It was dark at the time and the driver didn't see them in the road until it was simply too late. Police had to shoot the horses because of the injuries they sustained. The two people in the car were not hurt. The Coast Guard is asking for the public's help as they investigate rescue hoax calls made over the course of two days. My butt just ran out of gas in the middle of Port, Port 1, Maine. It was an SOS. SOS. 
The Coast Guard says on Wednesday, the Coast Guard Sector Northern New England Command Center received a report over VHF Channel 16 in a male child's voice stating, my boat just ran out of gas in the middle of Portland, Maine. Can you send a rescue boat out to get me? And ends the call with SOS, as you just heard. Late Thursday afternoon, the same individual made multiple calls, first saying their speedboat was stuck in the middle of Maine, and then two additional s transmissions stating SOS. They say it appears the caller is actually located in the vicinity of Burlington, Vermont, along the eastern shore of Lake Champlain. Coast Guard officials stress that VHF Channel 16 is solely for international hailing and distress, and making fake calls is not only a federal crime, but it puts, puts lives at risk. We have to treat all of these cases as, as a search and rescue case until we can prove otherwise. So that means, you know, we're launching crews, you know, people, assets, boats, et cetera, that potentially, you know, may be needed for an actual search and rescue case. And, and they've been, you know, diverted to respond to this hoax call that, you know, that, again, consumes time, resources, puts our crews at risk. Karakne says two recent similar cases in 2015 and 2021 in Maine, where hoax calls were investigated, resulted in the offenders being prosecuted, serving jail time, and paying significant fines. If you recognize this voice or have information regarding the above incidents, you're asked to contact the Sector Northern New England Command Center at 833-449-2407. That number is on your screen, but if you need a re repeat of that, head to foxbangor.com. The election is right around the corner, and there is guidance available for folks who are struggling to decide where they stand on the issues. Our Augusta reporter, Corey Bouchard, spoke with the Secretary of State to learn more about one resource available to help voters make informed decisions. Under the law, we're required to provide objective, nonpartisan materials so that voters can make their own choices about the election. The Citizen's Guide is a perfect example. The weeks and months leading up to elections are often filled with campaigns on both sides of political issues, which don't always give you the most accurate, objective information. The Maine Citizen's Guide to the Referendum Election is a free resource from the Secretary of State's office, published before every election with the goal of educating voters free from partisan slants. All of the questions are there, as well as explanations of the questions, the legal language that the questions will implement, and the costs associated with each question. So voters have that opportunity to read the questions, reflect on their understanding of what the question is asking, and what their opinion or values lead them to do. Referendum-only elections typically don't garner the same voter turnout as legislative, gubernatorial, congressional, or presidential elections. But Secretary Bellows says this year, there's quite a bit on the ballot. There are four citizen-initiated referendum questions on the ballot and four legislative-initiated constitutional amendments to the Maine Constitution. Uh, so there are eight questions. That's a lot. It certainly gives voters lots of choices and lots of issues that they can weigh in on. Election Day is Tuesday, November 7th. For a link to the Maine Citizen's Guide to the Referendum Election, you can visit our website. In Augusta, I'm Corey Bouchard for ABC7 and Fox 22 News. Political advertisements, especially around an election, can be overwhelming to some, and there are often misconceptions surrounding the content and scheduling of political ads. According to the Maine Association of Broadcasters, there are many federal laws and regulations restricting radio and television broadcasters when it comes to how they handle political ads. Normally, broadcasters can edit or reject advertisements if they don't meet content or copyright guidelines. However, Tim Moore, the president of the Maine Association of Broadcasters, says stations are legally not allowed to edit or modify political ads in any way and are required to sell the ad space at their lowest possible rate. Broadcasters do not have the freedom to edit in any way, shape, or form um, the content of a political ad, and that comes down sometimes to mild swearing. Any complaint is, whether it's factual or whether it's um, some other um, inconsistency or, or a problem with the ad uh, that the consumer sees or hears, um, their, their problem is with the campaign and not with the, the don't, it's, don't shoot the messenger, uh, basically. 
Moore adds that any political ad is required to have a disclosure within the ad telling you who pays for it, so make sure to pay attention to that part of the ad. As the partial solar eclipse made its way across the Americas over the weekend, visitors at the University of Maine tried to catch a glimpse of that ring of fire. The Versant Astronomy Center in Orono traditionally uses their observatory for educational and research purposes, but on Saturday they opened their doors to anyone wanting to glimpse that partial solar eclipse. Many gathered around telescopes to witness the cosmic phenomenon as it came across Maine skies. The greatest things for me is to be able to share these experiences with people that maybe have an interest in it, just don't know where to start, and to be able to share this wondrous event that human civilization has been viewing for thousands of years and is such an important part of human history, and to share it with people here, it's, it's wonderful. Every Friday, the Astronomy Center offers star shows to the general public at 7 p.m. in the Jordan Planetarium. And at 8 p.m., they invite people into the observatory to look through their historic Clark telescope. Of course, that depends on the weather. They say all are welcome to come and explore the cosmos. And you can learn more by visiting the, uh, the website. They do have neat things all the time. It's wonderful for kids. Um, they have different shows you can learn about obviously astronomy you can learn about the beginnings of the galaxy that kind of thing it's such and, a great the, rainy day activity i mean yeah. it, it, like you said the website but also facebook events they're really good about keeping up mm -hmm. and keeping events pretty regular so you can rely on them for a good weekend or afternoon activity they've got that wonderful brand new facility up there too right. brand new i say within like the last 10 years or so that but is brand new yeah, pretty, yeah. pretty new yeah so, kind of neat all right the time now is 8 12. Coming up next on Good Morning Maine, a time to remember great times while making new memories at the University of Maine. We'll have a look back at homecoming weekend. But first, another check of your weather forecast. It looks like a rainy day ahead today. It will be cloudy with rain likely, highs around 54 degrees, scattered showers overnight with lows dropping down to the mid 40s. Tomorrow, much like today, a mostly cloudy day on Tuesday with showers, the highs around 55. PDQ Door presents CHI Doors. CHI Doors are tough, dependable, engineered for fit and function. CHI Doors from PDQ Door, Hamden, Brockport, Bath, Waterville, Holton, Presque Isle, and PDQDoor.com. When you've experienced fire and smoke damage in your home, when pipes break and you have water everywhere, when you're concerned about your family's health because of mold, you need a friendly face to take care of it all. You need the friendly faces of Bouchard Cleaning and Restoration. We're just a click or call away. Whatever life throws at you, Bouchard Cleaning and Restoration is here for you. Bouchard Cleaning and Restoration. You keep the memories, we'll handle the rest. Silver Fox Automotive is a family owned and operated company with more than 30 years of experience. We are originally from the county and offer competitive prices and promise you will be completely satisfied with our work. We offer a stress-free experience to both our new and returning customers. We only use parts from reputable brands to ensure your vehicle is safe to drive. Here at Silver Fox, there will always be a friendly face to greet you. Come see us at 2004 Audlin Road in Herman. Always standing ready to answer the call to service. Service your garage door. PDQ door. PDQdoor.com. It is showtime. Oh my God. Hang on tight. We have the biggest names in television, sports, and music. I know a recipe for a party when I hear one. <laughs> All right, here we go. Amazing. There we go. Kick the leg. That's how I know you're having a good time. Welcome back, everyone. It was a busy weekend for University of Maine alumni students and families alike as two long-standing traditions hit the Orno campus at the very same time. Our Kelly Warren braves the crowds to bring us a closer look. The University of Maine's Orono campus was full over the weekend as both homecoming and family and friends weekend kicked off together. According to the UMaine website, this is the first time in eight years that both events landed on the same weekend. 
Well, it's been really awesome to see all the parents and all the students coming out today because really this is why we are here. This is why I do what I do planning these events to really provide an extremely positive atmosphere for students and for this weekend, their parents as well. Over 2,000 people registered to take part in the Family and Friends weekend festivities. The crossover featured a variety of events, including a street fair, axe throwing, and of course, tailgating for the UMaine football game. Go UMaine! As an RA, I love to see that my students, my kids, are having the support that they need and that their families are coming and seeing them, and they all get to go to the hockey game and the football game, and they get to celebrate with everybody. Alumni coming out for homecoming events got a chance to revisit their campus and reflect on memories. I got to visit the brand new engineering building this morning, which is just a huge upgrade <laughs> from the cinder block walls and, the, and things that we had. Um, so it's just a wonderful environment for the students to learn in now. They have like so much more collaborative spaces um, with uh, like team meeting rooms and even just the classrooms have transformed with all the technology. So it's great to see that that's coming here to Maine. In Orono, Callie Warren, ABC7 and Fox 22 News. A growing Bucksport community has a brand new place to safely show off their latest tricks. David Ledford dropped in to, he dropped into the grand opening. Sorry, I couldn't read it to take a look. I uh, love it. Come join us. Bucksport is now home to a brand new skate park. Saturday, skaters rolled in to celebrate. Riding, grinding, and sometimes falling to break in the equipment. According to Skate Bucksport, the committee that helped to bring the park to life, the new spot will provide a safe space for skaters to do all of that and more, and meet a community need. Bucksport's very like team sport orientated as well, but there's a lot of kids that were just like looking for a place to ride scooters and skateboards, and you know, giving them a safe place to do that uh, was our goal with all of this. And, like my son's big in the skateboarding, a bunch of his friends are, and they were just like in parking lots and stuff. Skaters of all ages and skill levels shared in their appreciation of the park. A lot of kids can't skate around here and they had a not so nice one here but now they have a very nice one here. It's good because more it makes more skate community. I learned how to like push and then get on. They're doing a lesson read over there. It's just overall a great day for people to come learn how to skate. Committee members say the ramps and other features will be put into storage during the winter months, but eventually they hope to make the park a more permanent fixture of the town. The future goals, everybody wants to see concrete. It's permanent, you know, it's, it's something that's never going to go away and it's going to be past my generation into future generations. And uh, yeah, it's the permanency. You know it's going to stay here. The park sits behind Ian's Playground on Elm Street and will be open every day from dawn to dusk. In Bucksport, David Ledford, ABC 7 and Fox 22 News. Looks like a lot of fun. I'm glad it gets kids outside and adults too and helps people make more friends. All right, we're going to take a quick ad break. We'll be right back with more. Stop by Dirt Road Cafe today for fresh baked cinnamon rolls, bread, whoopie pies, and cookies. Dirt Road Cafe specializes in nutritious farm to table meals for your family from ours. Why choose fast food when you can choose Dirt Road Cafe, offering the most affordable grab and go home cooked meals around? Stop by today. Ready to refresh your home? Fall into savings with incredible deals at the Furniture Gallery. Shop new arrivals from top brands like Ashley, Serta, Restonic, Nectar, and Franklin. Fall in love with unbeatable deals like our sofa and love seat sets for only $9.99 or sofas starting at $3.99. Indulge in ultimate comfort with over 150 recliner styles starting at just $2.99. My family and I are committed to giving you the best value for your money at the Furniture Gallery. Support our main family-owned business and save money. The Furniture Gallery. Hi, I'm Tony Hafford from TC Hafford Basement Systems, the all things basement-y company. Basement waterproofing, basement structural repair, humidity and mold control, and nasty crawl spaces too. Since 1991, over 15,000 Maine homeowners have trusted TC Hafford Basement Systems to fix their basements. Call TC Hafford Basement Systems today for all things basement-y. 
Mesothelioma is more than a ravaging illness. It is a disease that can ruin a family's finances and is never the victim's fault. The law offices of Joe Bornstein has been fighting and winning for Maine families for nearly 50 years, and we've collected over $500 million for injured Mainers. If you or a loved one is a victim of mesothelioma or asbestos-related lung cancer, call Joe today for a free case evaluation and to learn about your family's legal rights. Dial 207-CALL-JOE or online at joebornstein.com. Stop by Dirt Road Cafe today for fresh baked cinnamon rolls, bread, whoopie pies, and cookies. Dirt Road Cafe specializes in nutritious farm to table meals for your family from ours. Why choose fast food when you can choose Dirt Road Cafe, offering the most affordable grab and go home cooked meals around? Stop by today. Welcome back, everyone. The Bangor Comic and Toy Con brought media fans of all ages and interests to the Cross Insurance Center over the weekend. Our Grace Blanchard was also there as the event came to a close on Sunday. The Bangor Comic and Toy Con made its return, packing the Cross Center with media lovers, several guest celebrities, and much more. This is our second time at the Bangor Comic Con. The first time we were here, it was in the Bangor Mall. And that was pretty cool. And then this time now, it's back here in the Cross Center, which is awesome. Vendors came from all over the country. Uh, we're from Philadelphia. So we drove nine hours to get here, just to sell lightsabers to the lovely people of Maine. The interest and the, the, the feeling of a whole group, you know, this is a mass of people that have just such interest they didn't realize but there are other people that have the same interests. The co-owners of Winterhouse Gaming have been to multiple Comic Cons across the state, introducing gaming to people of all ages. It feels really good to get people out for a common cause, for people to have a place they feel like they can go, yeah. they're comfortable. And you can be whoever you want to here. Yeah. That's the great part. That you is can the great be part. anybody that you want to be. Many took that literally as they dressed as their favorite characters. Today he's uh, Spider-Man Noir from one of the uh, Spider-Man right. animated movies. A number of event goers say they enjoy the opportunity to share their interests with others. It's nice also to be around all these people that are like-minded and, and, and enjoy all this stuff. You know, it's, it's, it, it's, it's a fun thing. Uh, to be able to meet people who, who love Star Wars, who love, you know, Lord of the Rings, who love Dungeons and Dragons, it's, it's just... It's really nice to be with your people. It allows people to get out from behind their computer screens and meet people in person. It's, it's, a really, it's a really special thing. For those who missed out this weekend, the Comic Con will be returning to Bangor and Portland in 2024. In Bangor, Grace Blanchard for ABC7 and Fox 22 News. Looks like fun. Yeah, people of all ages love yeah. to see it. All right, the time now is 8.23. Let's get a full look at that rainy weather forecast. Thank you so much. Our main weather this morning is brought to you by Scott's Recreation, New England's largest trailer dealer, home of Maine's lowest camper and tractor prices, locations in Turner, Manchester, Herman, and Orono, Maine. All right, guys, don't forget your umbrellas outside today and tomorrow. Once again, we do have lots of rain all over the area, mainly in the northeast. Look at Boston. A little bit of showers down south. New York City, Long Island getting in on a couple of scattered showers. But the main story is here in Maine. We're actually going to start to pick up in intensity later on this afternoon with all this rain. Some steady rainfall will be in the area all throughout the day today and then once again into those overnight hours then by tomorrow morning we are still looking at some scattered showers then mainly starting to clear up later into those afternoon hours on tuesday by wednesday though we finally start to clear up with even some peaks of sunshine but the next couple of days possibly up to a tenth of an inch of rain here in town just up north same thing by the coast maybe a little bit more up to a quarter of an inch and then friday saturday and sunday we have another big rainmaker on the way where some places will get well over an inch of rain but that is still five to six days away waves are pretty high well offshore look at this nine foot waves and then over here where these green colors are showing up waves are well over even 20 feet so definitely low pressure system offshore and definitely causing some havoc 
offshore as well. Now, temperatures have been warm the last couple of weeks. We've had well above average temperatures, 60s, 70s, even some 80s. But now, the last like five, six days, some cooler air, those blue colors, that does indicate some near average to slightly below average temperatures in the region. Now, we're going to continue to stay below average the next couple of days. But then look what happens Wednesday, Thursday, especially into Friday and Saturday. We are looking at above average temperatures rolling in once again. 60s will be returning in the region uh, pretty much later on this week. For today, not quite. Mid 50s outside, cloudy skies, some rain will be likely in those uh, breezy conditions out of the northeast at around 10 to 15 miles per hour. Tonight, same story, a bit cooler though. Mid 40s outside, then for tomorrow, same thing. Mid 50s outside, mostly cloudy skies, besides more scattered showers. We're not going to get that steady rainfall like we're going to get outside today. Our extended forecast outlook does show much better conditions returning Wednesday into Thursday. From a gallon of gas to a gallon of milk, everything costs more these days. And question three will make things worse. It'll cost billions and we'll be on the hook for it. It will increase our electric bills. And question three, it doesn't require an operations plan, not even for emergencies or power outages. Question three is too costly and too risky for my family. I'm voting no on three. It's a bad idea for Maine. Are you ready to light it up, Bangor? Experience the all-new Hot Wheels Monster Trucks Live Glow Party, featuring outrageous monster trucks action, including the electrifying freestyle motocross, laser light show, and the fire-breathing transforming robot, Transaurus. Plus the Crash Zone pre-show party before each performance and save up to 50% on kids' tickets. Come watch your favorite Hot Wheels monster truck toys come to life October 20th through 22nd at Cross Insurance Center in Bangor. Tickets available at Ticketmaster.com. At your Toyota all-wheel drive headquarters, we see the world differently. You might see a sunny road, but we see the treacherous road it could become in winter. So to prepare you, we're holding the Toyota all-wheel drive savings event with thousands of Toyotas to choose from. You can get 3.99 financing on a RAV4, which could save you up to $1,700, plus get no-cost maintenance and more. The event ends October 31st, so see your New England Toyota dealer, your all-wheel drive headquarters. Toyota, let's go places. Hanks Husqvarna is your full-line Husqvarna dealer with two convenient locations, 32 Old State Road in Carmel and 19 Moosehead Trail in Newport. Whether it's tractors and zero turns, chainsaws to trimmers, or pressure washers to battery power, everything is set up, serviced, and ready to go by our certified Husqvarna technician. And all sales are backed by our in-house Husqvarna warranty. For parts, service, or sales, stop in to Hanks Husqvarna, Carmel, or Newport. Overseas, leading to tensions here at home, including a disturbing murder case in Illinois. A boy and his mother were allegedly targeted by their landlord because of their religion. Here's ABC's Derek Dennis. This morning, outrage outside Chicago after the brutal stabbing death of a six-year-old and the wounding of his mother allegedly attacked by their landlord. Investigators say 71-year-old Joseph Zuba targeted the boy and his mother in their Plainfield, Illinois home because of their Muslim faith amid the ongoing war between Israel and Hamas. She said he knocked on the door and that he attempted to choke her and said, you Muslims, must die. The boy suffering 26 stab wounds. His mother stabbed at least a dozen times. She ran into the bathroom and called 911. And by the time she came out, he had located and murdered her child, six year old Wadia. The attack coming during a weekend of rising tensions due to the war overseas. FBI Director Christopher Wray in a speech this weekend said while there have been no specific credible plots against the U.S., there has been an increase in reported threats since the war broke out. He says his main concern is a lone wolf motivated by the conflict going on a rampage. Concerns also mounting in Europe. A Jewish security group reports a 324% increase in anti-Semitic incidents in the UK since the Hamas attack on Israel nine days ago. Derek Dennis, ABC News. 
Back in Illinois, that mother who was stabbed is expected to survive. The landlord, though, is charged with first-degree murder and hate crime charges. President Biden calling the stabbings horrific. In other news this morning, farmers in Louisiana are facing an invasion problem, not from bugs, but from ocean salt. Salt water from the Gulf of Mexico is pushing up the Mississippi River. Farmers now scrambling to save their produce and conserving what good water they still have until saving rains arrive. Fox News reporter Bowen Kedrowitz has more. Salt water can have an effect on a citrus plant at any stage. I spoke with a farmer in Bell Chase who says he had to redesign his entire nursery just to save his produce. Star nursery owner Joseph Renatza says he has never seen a salt water threat this bad before. He's not sure how his citrus orders across the country will be affected. Well, we're hoping that it's not going to change. Tom would tell. Renatza's nursery gets water from the Mississippi River. With the looming threat of salt water, he has moved away from watering the entire plant. The plant can absorb more salt through the root system and when it can overhead because the salt will burn the foliage of the plant and that's what will kill the plant itself. Renatza now gives the smallest amount of water possible to the base of the plant. Since we had the intrusion, we put everything under drip irrigation. It's only a drop at a time that you put on for about 15 to 20 minutes. And we do that every other day, just to keep the plant alive. According to the New Orleans District U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, the saltwater is expected to reach Bell Chase on October 27th. State officials say this could be a long-term problem for farmers. They would lose their livelihood. If you look at the, the length of this, you know, we know that until we get enough sufficient rainfall to put increased flow down the river, uh, that it's going to be with us. And we do believe that it's going to reach, you know, further up river. Uh, we know it's going to keep advancing probably until mid to late November. Dr. Strain says farmers should consistently check the salinity levels of the water they are giving their plants. The United States Army Corps of Engineers says this saltwater problem could run through early January. In Bell Chase, Louisiana, Bowen Kedrovich, Fox News. The CDC says roughly 240,000 women in the U.S. are diagnosed with breast cancer every year. And during Breast Cancer Awareness Month, advocates and health experts say it's critical patients, survivors, and their caretakers get the support they need. Fox News' Ted Linder takes a closer look at how you can lend a helping hand. One foot in front of the other. Thousands of people across the country continue marching to support breast cancer patients and survivors fighting for a cure. The love, support, the energy, it's just amazing. October marks Breast Cancer Awareness Month. The disease is the second most common cancer among women in the U.S. behind some kinds of skin cancer, according to the CDC. It's also the most expensive cancer to fight making up 14% of all cancer treatment costs. Thousands of breast cancer patients are forced to choose between paying their mortgage and paying for medication. But while the American Cancer Society finds the rate of breast cancer deaths has been declining for more than 30 years, medical experts say the statistics don't stop many survivors from being overwhelmed with fear their cancer will return. Fear of cancer recurrence is one of the most prevalent, persistent, and disruptive sources of distress for cancer survivors. Shelley Johns of Indiana University School of Medicine says those worries are more severe for younger survivors. Approximately 50% of breast cancer survivors have moderate to severe levels of fear of recurrence that can really disrupt their social, cognitive, emotional, and physical functioning. John says it's important to know that this fear is normal and recommends breast cancer survivors talk to their doctors about their risk of recurrence and ways they can reduce it. In moments where fear can impact happiness, John says survivors should also speak to a trusted therapist and engage in hobbies to help them refocus their mind. Ted Lindner, Fox News. All right, coming up on the second half of the newscast, we will, oh, we'll be speaking, this tease is no longer accurate, my bad, but we'll be speaking with our general manager. We won a pretty cool award over the weekend. It's an exciting time for everybody here at the station. We'll tell you all about it when we come back.
With Chevy Silverado and Silverado HD, you can take on the mountains, or you can move them. With the power of up to 36,000 pounds of max available towing and the confidence of an available 13.4-inch diagonal touchscreen, whatever your mountain, there's a Silverado for you. Get 0% financing, plus make no monthly payments for 90 days on all 2023 Silverado 1500 pickups. Plus, get 1,000 cash allowance on this Silverado. Visit your main Chevy dealer. Hood Milk and You. That's why we do what we do. Day in and day out. Making milk you can trust. With no artificial growth hormones. And we protect Hood Milk with our light block bottle. We care about our milk. Because we know how much you care about what you give your family. So you can feel good about Hood. You're watching Fox 22, Bangor. Welcome back, everyone. Today is Monday, October 16th, 2023. It is also National Adoption Week. The objective of this special week is to raise awareness about the importance of adoption. There are currently more than 400,000 children in foster care around the nation, and many of them are waiting for their permanent home, or all of them are, but more than 100 of them are right here in Maine. A number of events will be held around the nation this week to share their stories with hopes it will change their lives for the better. You can check out with A Family For Me, their website, and they can tell you more about adoption if you're interested, or actually it's also for people who might want to consider being a foster family too. They right. always need some help. Right. Yep. All right. On this day in history, back in 1923, it all began then. The Walt Disney Company was founded. In 1962, the Cuban Missile Crisis began as President Kennedy was informed about the presence of missile bases in Cuba. And in 1968, American athletes Tommy Smith and John Carlos sparked controversy at the Olympics by giving the Black Power salute during the victory ceremony. In 1997, in the first known case in the U.S., a Georgia woman gave birth after being implanted with previously frozen eggs. And in 2002, President George W. Bush signed a resolution authorizing war against Iraq. A lot of things happened on this day. Yep. yep. Today's birthdays include musician John Mayer, who's 46 today, Rocker Flea from Red Hot Chili Peppers is 61, and this is also the birthday of actress Suzanne Somers, who passed away yesterday. Yesterday. Friends and family had gathered to celebrate her 77th birthday, but are instead celebrating her extraordinary life following a long battle with breast cancer. Suzanne Summers, of course, known oh, for, for yeah. Three's Company, a, a very successful sitcom that went for a number of years. Loved it. It was such a yeah. funny show. Yep. And then later on um, promoted good health. Right. And, um, and thigh masters and things like that. Right. So anyway, she, did she made a career out of it. Yeah, so. so that's how other people will yeah. recognize her. But she was such an advocate yeah. for awareness about breast cancer. And what a good way to use your, you know, good publicity. I, yeah. I would agree with you. Yep. All right, before uh, we take move ahead, let's take a look at that forecast again. Looks like a cloudy day today. Rain showers moving in after a very nice weekend. Such a sleepy Monday. Here's Conrad's, uh, Conrad Sapinski with that forecast. Thank you so much. Our first weather this morning is brought to you by Scott's Recreation. Locations in Turner, Manchester, Herman, and Orono, Maine. All right, once again, another overcast day outside this morning. Even a couple of showers are starting to show up. Look at this. All over the state, we're looking at rain from north to central to right by the coast. There are a couple of showers that are in the area. This will just pick up in intensity throughout the day today. Visibility-wise, though, not too bad here in town. Same story up in the Millinocket area. But look at Bar Harbor. Visibilities are a bit lower. A little bit of rain in the area, some thicker clouds, a little bit of fog, combination of everything, and definitely some lower visibilities all over the region. We do have a solid 5 to 10 mile per hour breeze here in town right by the coast as well bar harbor into the rockland area machaya same story even up north into greenville millinocket same thing at around 10 miles per hour now later on today we're gonna have winds at around 10 15 miles per hour temperatures back in those mid 50s and then we're looking at cloudy skies and some rain that will be likely throughout the day today same story tonight, showers all over the area, mainly scattered. Temperatures back in those mid-40s, so a little bit cooler with a light breeze out of the northeast at around 
5 to 15 miles per hour for tomorrow. A little bit warmer. We're going to be back in those mid 50s, mostly cloudy skies, a couple of scattered showers possible. Once again, later on this afternoon, we are looking at scattered rain. Temperatures back in those mid 50s. Thank you, Conrad. Just look going to be a messy, messy day today. Yeah. So, nothing will dampen our spirits around here, though. This is a very exciting time here at our at our station. Over the weekend, we received a very exciting award. And to tell us more about it, Mike Palmer joining us, our vice president and general manager. You're walking on cloud nine today. I, I am imagine. very <laughs> excited, uh, very excited to be here today. I don't do this very often, Craig. So thank you for letting me uh, take some of your time away. And of course. Thank you to everyone for watching this morning. I have a very special announcement, something we're all very proud of. Uh, Saturday night in Portland, um, for the very first time, the Maine Association of Broadcasters named a television station of the year for excellence. And uh, we, ABC Channel 7 and Fox 22, are the first station named as television station of the year. And I'm just so very proud of everyone here. This is a whole station award and I'm not exaggerating when I say uh, I love everyone in the building and I, I really mean that. I'm just so very happy and proud of everyone. Um, couldn't be more proud. We've been talking about it this morning too. It's more than just the folks you see on the TV yeah, all the time. Very There's much. so many people in the background that um, do countless jobs and we couldn't do it without them. People like that, Dave Simpson right there, our chief photographer who's out there every day covering the news. I think this next photo, if we do show it, we have a great group shot from Saturday. I was there on Saturday and it's not everybody. We have a big team here at WVII, but the next photo, if they want to switch, there we go, <laughs> thanks guys. I love this photo because it shows a little bit of everybody. We have people in the director's booth we have production assistants we have uh, um, reporters we have anchors well, we have people in sales. Photo. yeah where were you <laughs> oh, where i was there yeah. they, did, they ditched me again oh yeah. no but it's a, just a little taste of everybody who you know makes things happen and it's just just a little bit but i'm just so proud of everybody because it's mm. clear and that everybody I work with, I'm so thankful everybody cares a lot. Now everyone had a role yeah. to play in this, and I mean that. Uh, Keenan right there behind the camera, <laughs> Caleb directing, and Natalie on the audio board, mm -hmm. and of course, Lucia, the director, Data and Master Control, our salespeople and office staff upstairs just getting their day started, and Kyle in engineering, and everyone on the camera and off camera, everyone yeah. had a role to play for this award. I'm just so very humbled, so very uh, grateful, and Thank you to everyone out there watching. I appreciate your time you spend with us and the trust you have in us. And uh, we'll try to do a little bit better. Every day we try to do better than the day before. I like and that goal. I don't, know, I don't know if the one thing everyone knows this yet. We just did something new, a brand new initiative. We hired a new person. And he is, I believe, I'm quite certain, is the only full-time television reporter living and reporting from Augusta. Yeah, Corey The Bush only Shire. state house reporter full-time in the state of Maine. And, uh, you know, bringing you local news. So thank you, everyone, and I'll let you go back to your show. Thanks, hey, Mike. by the way, it starts at the top, and you're setting a good example. <laughs> yeah. We couldn't do what we're doing without uh, good leadership well, you make my, You else, guys so. both make my job a lot easier, yeah. believe me. Thanks, Mike. But thank Congratulations. You guys. Yeah, of course. Thank you, my, thank you bro. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's take a break. We'll be back with more news right after this. We've been in business for 31 years, and our employees and guests are like family. We've worked hard, and they've worked hard. That's why question three worries me. It puts our power grid in the hands of politicians. It costs $13.5 billion. That's billion with a B. Can you believe that? That could mean higher taxes for all of us. It's bad for our business, and it's bad for Maine. Question three is a risk Maine can't afford. At your Toyota all-wheel drive headquarters, we see the world differently. You might see a sunny road, but we see the treacherous road it could become in winter. So to prepare you, we're holding the Toyota all-wheel drive savings event with thousands of Toyotas to choose from. You can get 3.99 financing on a Tacoma, which could save you up to $2,000. Plus, get no-cost maintenance and more. The event ends October 31st, so see your New England Toyota dealer. Your all-wheel drive headquarters. Toyota, let's go places. This or that, this or that. You can do this when you edgy that. You can do this when you edgy that. You can do this because everywhere is that. Connect with skilled professionals to get all your home projects done well. Get started today at Angie.com. 
Great things are always cooking at the ground ground. New menu, new specials, with an amazing variety of choices for every taste. Good times, great service, and amazing food. Only at your locally owned ground ground. Odlin Road, Bangor. Now what? You say it when it feels like you're starting too late. At Prudential, we think you should ask it when you realize it's not too late to start. Like when your new passion is now your life passion, ask now what? Here's what. You come to Prudential and help ensure your retirement has income that lasts a lifetime. Who's your rock? Talk to an advisor and build a more secure retirement today. 25 words or less. Monster. Dracula. Zombie. Um, Frankenstein. Five days a week. Weekdays at 9 on Fox 22. back we are going to send things up to old town now Devin Dagnall has been up there this morning to tell us about a really important fundraiser that's going to be taking place up at governor's restaurant here's what Devin had to say thanks Emma and Craig I'm with Beth from Karen community covered at governor's in old town Beth how are we doing today I'm doing pretty good how are you so what do we have going on so today is world hunger day and we've joined with governors here in old town to do a fundraiser from eight o'clock no, from 11 o'clock this morning till 8 o'clock tonight, we will be doing 10% of any any pur purchases here at Governor's will come to the Caring Community Cupboard. That includes dine-in and takeout. Okay, awesome. So it's an excuse to get Governor's, and it is $5 hamburger day, right? It is. Okay, perfect. So uh, you were telling me this is the first time you guys are doing this event, correct? It is, it is. We hope to make it a make it a tradition. Okay, okay. Um, how, did, how did this occur? Who approached who? So I believe our, our president, Linda Bryant, uh, approached Jason, the owner of Governors, and, and worked out a deal to help them support our local community. Okay, so um, what are you guys hoping for? Is there a goal in mind that we're trying to reach, or are we just trying to get whatever we can get today? We haven't set an actual goal, but we do service about between 150 and 200 families a week. So the more we can get, the, the healthier the cupboard will be. Absolutely. Can you tell me why, why is it important on, on days like today, but not just days like today's, but you know, just any day you can help, why is it important to help out uh, food pantries and community cupboards like yours? Well, our food pantry in particular is completely run by donations. We don't have any income other than what people donate and the local community supports us with. We don't, we don't take anything from the state. Everything we get is locally, locally funded. Mm -hmm. um, and there's a large population of hungry people in the state of Maine. I believe the last number I read was 1,144,000 1, 1, people, with 10% of those being children. Oh, and are those, when over a million people, is that just people under the, the poverty line, or is it just people that are experiencing food insecurity in general? Food insecurity in general. Food insecurity in general. And it's organizations like yours that try to lower that number and make sure that those children that are going without have full be bellies when they go to bed. Exactly. It's a, it's a beautiful cause. All right, so it is only this Governors in Old Town, correct? Correct, only the Governors in Old okay, Town. Okay, so if you come to Governors in Old Town from 11 to 8, Yes. 11 to 8, you can come, get a $5 burger, and 10% of that's going to go to the Caring Community Cupboard. We're also doing a 50-50 raffle, and we'll be accepting non-perishable items or cash donations as well. Perfect. All right, back to you, Emma and Craig. All right, thank you, Devin. $5 Boy, that, burger? Sorry. That sounds good. You like the sound yes. of that, huh? It's, we're hungry. It's about that time, right. too. So, yeah, going out to Governor's today in Old Town, and as you buy your lunch or your dinner, you know you're helping other people right there in the area, too. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, Caring Community Cupboard has a great Facebook post or Facebook website. If you need help from them at all, they're there for you. All right, back yeah. with your forecast right after this. PDQ Door presents CHI Doors. CHI Doors are tough, dependable, engineered for fit and function. CHI Doors from PDQ Door, Hamden, Rockport, Bath, Waterville, Holton, Presque Isle, and PDQDoor.com.
Come stop by Triple S Tax Shop, 315 Hamden Road, Carmel, for quality clothing and equestrian gear. Winter is coming. Make sure your roof is at peak performance with Peak Performance Roofing. With over 20 years of experience in the roofing industry, our professionals provide quality craftsmanship and expertise that you can rely on. We are fully insured and work closely with your insurance company to make the process seamless for you. Don't wait until it's too late. Contact Peak Performance Roofing today to schedule your free estimate. 416-8301. Peak Performance Roofing. Your roof is our priority. Silver Fox Automotive is a family-owned and operated company with more than 30 years of experience. We are originally from the county and offer competitive prices and promise you will be completely satisfied with our work. We offer a stress-free experience to both our new and returning customers. We only use parts from reputable brands to ensure your vehicle is safe to drive. Here at Silver Fox, there will always be a friendly face to greet you. Come see us at 2004 Audlin Road in Herman. Always standing ready to answer the call to service. Service your garage door. PDQ door. PDQ door. Welcome back in everyone. Thank you for staying with us. We're going to start on the ice. It was a big week for the University of Maine men's hockey team starting last Saturday really with a 3-2 win over UNH in an exhibition and then they played their season opener at the Alphonse sweeping the series against RPI and outscoring the engineers 10 to 4 in the two games. For Maine, it's their first 2 and 0 start since 2018, and it was a highly anticipated start too. With the way Maine played in the second half of the season last year and then the off-season additions of the Nadeau brothers and the big returning core that they have, the Maine hockey faithful had a lot to be excited about heading into the year. I think it's wonderful. I think Coach Baz getting his recruits in here. I think they're building programs looking up. I'm pretty excited. They got, you know, a whole slew of freshmen back. Well, not freshmen anymore, but last year's freshmen back. Things should really start gelling pretty good, I think. Yeah, the hype's unreal. Like, I'm just excited to be here, excited to watch them play. You, know? you definitely see a difference in the stadium. This place was not this packed last year, but you love to see it. All right, now it's not only the team on the ice that has people talking this year. Inside of the Alphon, we've mentioned it before, a new video board system, upgrades to the sound, upgrades really all around for the entire fan experience. And we finally got to see all of that stuff in action this weekend. That was awesome. You know, I've always, my, my sight isn't what it used to be. And this is great upgrade. Uh, it also looks like they replaced the glass this year. So I'm really excited about that. Uh, I sit down behind our goals, so uh, that's kind of a big thing for me. We have gorgeous speakers, we have a gorgeous scoreboard, like it's just alive in here. The upgrades here are wonderful, the atmosphere is always wonderful, it's nice to, nice to see the barn get more people back in it. Definitely nice to see the barn getting more people back in it. Let's stay in Orono now. It's homecoming weekend up there for our Black Bears, and the main event was Saturday afternoon. Main football hosting Long Island University. It's a packed house at Alphonse Stadium to watch the Black Bears take on the Sharks. We're going to start third play of the game. Maine looking for a third down stop, but Ethan Greenwood fires it to Michael Love. He makes a man miss. He's off to the races, cutting to the sideline, outrunning the defense. That is a 71-yard touchdown to open the game for the Sharks. Sharks. Let's go to the first, still in the first quarter. Sharks threatening again. This time Greenwood finds Chris Howell. But look at Damon Matthews. He's going to punch it out at the last second. We'll slow that down. If you look closely, that ball hits the inside of the pylon. It's ruled a main ball and a touchback. So here come the Black Bears. Derek Robertson finds Montego Moss. He leaps over the defense and in for the score. This one was a back and forth game. All game, but Maine's deep offense would come through late. Black Bears win 24 to 13. All right, heading back down I-95 to Bangor, where Husson football opened up conference play against Curry College. First quarter tied at zero. Curry in the red zone, handoff to Monty Quinn, but he fumbles the ball on contact. Husson would not convert on the ensuing drive, though. So to the start of the second quarter we go. Husson now in the red zone. Nick Visser hits Ashton Navarrete over the middle. He runs outside, down the sideline, 15 yards, and into the end zone for the score. Eagles up 6-0. All right, nine minutes left in the half. Husson on the one 
one yard line. Elijah Garnett goes up the middle for the touchdown. Husson goes up 14 to nothing. The story of the day, though, that Eagles defense. Husson hits Colin Ridley hard, forcing another fumble, and that's a touchdown, and that would lead Husson to a 28 to 7, 7 conference opener win. All right, let's go back to the University of Maine now and on the cross country circuit, former Bangor Ram and now Black Bears freshman Megan Randall making headlines once again. In the field of 288 participants this Friday at the ECAC cross country championships, Randall placed seventh overall, the top finisher out of all competing America East participants. She posted a time of 20 minutes, 55 and a half seconds. That's a personal best for her on a 6K track. Randall has been named the America East female performer of the week twice already this season. The Black Bears men's cross country team also placed seventh in the event as a group as well in a field of 34 teams. All right, so big congrats to them to the basketball court now and some news out of the Celtics beat Boston hiring former coach and analyst Jeff Van Gundy to their staff. It was announced on Saturday first reported by Mass Live that Van Gundy was named a senior consultant for the Celtics. Van Gundy in recent years has primarily been an analyst for ESPN. However, he was head coach of the Knicks and the Knicks and the Rockets in the 90s and early 2000s, leading New York to an NBA Finals appearance in 1999. He's also served for as a coach for Team USA in recent years, coaching the senior USA FIBA team in 2017. Certainly a good basketball brain to have around that Celtics operation. All right, looking forward for that season to start soon. For now, that's all the time we have for sports. We'll be right back after the break. Thank you so much. Our main weather this morning is brought to you by Scott's Recreation, New England's largest trailer dealer, home of Maine's lowest camper and tractor prices, locations in Turner, Manchester, Herman, and Orono, Maine. All right, guys, don't forget your umbrellas outside today and tomorrow. Once again, we do have lots of rain all over the area, mainly in the northeast. Look at Boston, a little bit of showers down south, New York City, Long Island getting in on a couple of scattered showers. But the main story is here in Maine. We're actually going to start to pick up in intensity later on this afternoon with all this rain, some steady rainfall will be in the area all throughout the day today and then once again into those overnight hours. Then by tomorrow morning, we are still looking at some scattered showers, then mainly starting to clear up later into those afternoon hours on Tuesday. By Wednesday, though, we finally start to clear up with even some peaks of sunshine. But the next couple of days, possibly up to a tenth of an inch of rain here in town. Just up north, same thing. By the coast, maybe a little bit more, up to a quarter of an inch. And then Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, we have another big rainmaker on the way where some places will get well over an inch of rain, but that is still five to six days away. Waves are pretty high well offshore. Look at this nine foot waves and then over here where these green colors are showing up. Waves are well over even 20 feet. So definitely low pressure system offshore and definitely causing some havoc offshore as well. Now temperatures have been warm the last couple of weeks. We've had well above average temperatures, 60s, 70s, even some 80s. But now the last like five, six days, some cooler air, those blue colors that does indicate some near average to slightly below average temperatures in the region. Now we're going to continue to stay below average the next couple of days. But then look what happens Wednesday, Thursday, especially into Friday and Saturday. We are looking at above average temperatures rolling in once again. 60s will be returning in the region uh, pretty much later on this week. For today, not quite. Mid 50s outside, cloudy skies, some rain will be likely in those uh, breezy conditions out of the northeast at around 10 to 15 miles per hour. Tonight, same story, a bit cooler though. Mid 40s outside, then for tomorrow, same thing. Mid 50s outside, mostly cloudy skies. Besides more scattered showers. We're not going to get that steady rainfall like we're going to get outside today. Our extended forecast outlook does show much better conditions returning Wednesday into Thursday. So hang in there a couple of days, then things will brighten up around here. Yeah, I kind of like a cloudy Monday though. Yeah. Okay, looks like we're about out of time for today. If you missed anything, please head to foxbangor.com. 25 words or less is coming up next on Fox 22. And the next newscast at noon with you. I know, I'm doing the noon. Susan's out for today. I hope she's better tomorrow, but either way, we got her covered. All right, and we hope you have a wonderful day. Thanks for joining us.